Okay, hello and welcome to this first live recording of the My Career Story podcast. I'm very excited to have this wonderful young lady with me, Jade Garner. How are you? I'm good, Steve. How are you? Not too bad. Yeah, we had a bit of a few, a few technical difficulties just there then getting started, didn't we? But it's, that's what happens when you move to the Lake District, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still down in London, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm near Greenwich now. Yeah, excellent. Cool. So I know you've got a busy day ahead, so we'll get cracking on things. And I will just start by saying, Jade, what is your career story? So my career story actually begun exactly four years ago today. It came up on my timeline this morning as a nice reminder. Um, so I left sixth form having finished my A-levels at 18. I studied uh, maths, economics and geography and I mm -hmm. started an apprenticeship at the same firm I'm at now, which is EY. Mm -hmm. um, across those four years I've done a lot of work within the insurance industry as well as sit in my ACA exams of which I hopefully only have one more left to complete. I get my results for two of those next month and then yeah hopefully sit my final one in November and mm. then by the end of the year I should hopefully be a qualified chartered accountant. Which I was just going to ask, amazing. yeah, so that would be a nice, hopefully a nice Christmas present to end Definitely, the year with. have a nice break yeah. off over Christmas if that's the case. <laughs> exactly, so like as you said, so you have been doing your um, apprentice uh, apprenticeship at EY and that's where we met, isn't it, because you were one of the young people that joined the programmes that I was um, helping to recruit for and everything, so talk us through that journey, how did you discover that a, an apprenticeship um, was at that point something that you wanted to pursue other than the different options which were available to you? Sure, um, so I think I'd gone through most of school just assuming I would go to university um, simply because I think at my school there was a very high rate of people that did probably about 95% um, mm. of people did so and certainly people that were doing academic subjects they were expected to go to university that was just the done thing um it wasn't really until I got to the first year of A levels that I even questioned whether something else was a possibility really but um I had some older friends through my part-time jobs and well a, a lot of the, and that was at Debenhams um and a lot of them has come out of university having studied a range of different degrees and they they'd struggled to find jobs in the industries that mm -hmm. they wanted to work in and I, I was worried that I would go down the same path myself having spent a lot of money to, to study a degree that might not even you know get me in a job within that industry um so I went along to um a few university fairs with my school and one of one of them that I went to, I think it was at um, the Alexandra Palace, um, they had a stand there with some people from EY um, and they, they were discussing the apprenticeship opportunities that were available. I, I wasn't actually aware myself that it was something that I could do, but after having heard from some people there that day and having researched some of the programmes, I also went away and researched some of the other programs with some other similar firms and made the decision that actually uh, this would be a good idea to apply to and you know if I could bypass doing uni and be qualified at a young grade I think that made a lot more sense to me whilst yeah. getting a lot more experience along the way. Mm -hmm. And um, what what was um, it's got the experience piece there and being able to start your career earlier what were some of the things that were things said about you choosing that pathway negative or positive yeah sure so i think from the perspective of my school it was definitely seen as a negative thing i was told it would just be kind of be the easy option the easy way out mm -hmm. which which it certainly hasn't been the last few years i've been many late nights both working and studying for exams um it was sort of sort of their view that i'd sort of be the person you know making tea for everyone in the office which is far from being the case I'd be kind of be delighted if someone made, asked me to make them a tea <laughs> once in a while um, um yeah so that was a view from my my school and it was kind of like it was a you know a cop out you know bypassing university and that ultimately they believed I wouldn't end up as successful or making as much money as someone who did um my my family were very supportive they've 
always been fairly supportive of the choices that I make and especially when I explain to them you know where the program would lead me and the qualification it would get me to they they were even more supportive of that so there was never an issue from that side and I think in terms of my friends um no no one really done anything similar that I knew that I was friends with but I think a lot of them now in retrospect wish that maybe they had done I mean a lot of them have finished uni either last year or this year and especially with the current situation of finding it yeah. very very difficult to mm. get jobs whereas we've had new joiners start in my department this week there's been 10 new people just within my department who have all just finished their a levels and mm. you know it's clear to see there's quite a contrast in the job opportunities available to graduates versus school leavers sometimes yeah there is and um, then it was um, i kind of expected it with the firm that you're working for um, anyway for um, at EY anyway because they are very committed to young people and to apprenticeships but there was um, a lot of opportunities that were pulled away from young people not just in the graduate space but in the apprenticeship space as well of people being told well we can't take you this year maybe next year and it is a nice uh, no not even nice isn't the right word I think it's something that um, gives you that security and that stability of knowing as well as working towards a career that is going to set you up for life um, potentially so tell us about the work that you do what do you do at EY? Uh, yeah so <laughs> always an interesting question um, definitely one that's hard to explain in, <laughs> in a few minutes but um, to give an overview so that there's a number of different departments within the company um, so I'm placed within the audit department specifically working um, for insurance companies so overall the job essentially involves ensuring that the figures that the insurance companies are reporting are correct and not fraudulent um which links in vir to virtually everyone's life so i mean everyone will have an insurance policy uh, with a range of different companies and even if you haven't heard of some of the companies we're necessarily working with they're probably reinsured through these companies so the importance of making sure that these companies you know do have the money they say they do do have the assets they say they do is links into everyone's day-to-day -day life as if one of these companies go bust you know you're not going to get any of your money paid out so you know it's kind of up there with the importance of banks and other financial institutions that um and i think i've realized that more across the years actually the vital role it plays in upholding the economy so yeah i'd, I'd say um in terms of my day-to-day -day role, I probably, well, not at the moment, but prior to working from home, my time was sort of split 50-50 between going to the office and being out at client sites. So some of those are more local in London. Um, I did get the opportunity to work in Edinburgh for about four or five months, which was a beautiful city to have the opportunity to work in. So there's a nice range in terms of, it's not constant traveling, but there is an element of that as well. Um, in terms of being out at client sites, it all involve um, a lot of meetings with clients and a lot of speaking to people, which is part of my role. I really love, you know, having that interaction and helping people to solve real issues. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that travel piece is, I mean, it's obviously something that is restricted at the moment, but it's something that's really important part of people's career. Sometimes it gives you that global mobility piece of being able to think about whether or not I could go and work in a different office for an extended period of time. I remember the, the time that you were up in Edinburgh and the, what you were sharing online and stuff and so it's nice to see that as well when you're on an apprenticeship you get given those opportunities because I, I kind of what would you say to somebody that might say oh well if you're on an apprenticeship you're not gonna I mean you mentioned making cups of tea there but even if you're <laughs> An, an apprenticeship and you've got a formal structure there people might go oh well that's something that you earn kind of I don't feel from my experience of apprenticeships not just at EY but other companies as well that that's the case um, when you earn that trust and you show that you're capable 
people will give you those opportunities. You'll get the same opportunities as anyone else within that firm is the way I see it. You're not looked at as a lesser person. But as you say, it's very much building up that trust and respect. And if, if you can't build that up, then no, you aren't likely to get those opportunities. But over time, as you do show that and you do gain that respect then yeah there's no reason why you can't have the same opportunities as somebody else mm. and what do you get out of working um, as an apprentice working along more experienced colleagues what have you learned from them um so, so much whether that be from you know insurance specific skills which I'm sure isn't overly interesting to people that will be listening to this but I, I think I think the more important thing that I've learned from spending so much time with people you know that have had professional careers that have spanned 20 years plus is those skills of speaking to people in meetings and you know learning how to engage with clients properly and to build up that trust and reputation with the client and the confidence you develop as well to lead and present meetings and to believe in your own ideas as you're presenting them I think they're all very important skills that possibly I wouldn't have got so much if I went to university and I think having those skills will put me in a better position for any future change of career that I wish to have. Mm. And do you think were any of those skills that you're using today taught as part of the curriculum or the work that you did at school or was that something that you had to learn for yourself as well? Sure, um, well, I think whilst elements of it are maybe touched on in school so uh, I think more so in sixth form certainly not in up to the point where I'd finished my GCSEs they hadn't been touched on but I think going in sixth form they did try to prepare people a little bit more for the wider working world and try and encourage us to do presentations in front of people so whilst they were touched on I don't think they gave you you know enough of the experience you need for real life <laughs> mm. but, but perhaps uh, some of the skills that you can only really develop by putting them into you know a real situation yeah I, I completely agree I think that's like the the careers that I've had where I've been thrown in the deep and my own journey when I started at EY I'd never done branding and marketing and I was lucky that I had a mentor in my director that saw the opportunity and kind of went you've had time working with young people I don't know anything about them I know all of this let's work together there's a lot that I see in the apprenticeship space of partnerships and peer mentoring of, of um, more experienced people learning from younger people, which I find fascinating and really encouraging as well. Especially with um, the tech elements. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I'm lucky. I, um, my father's got um, a new iPhone arriving this afternoon, and I'm dreading it because I know we're just going <laughs> to. I was going to work. You're going to get shouted at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, I'll get shouted at. Yeah. Um, and so thinking about your career so far so the four years that you've had working um, where you are so what have been some of the highlights for you? I think um, one of the highlights which I'm sure you'll remember was going to the school leaver of the year awards um, yeah, yeah but, well I, I don't think that was the whole of the awards but it was you know an industry awards for school leaver and apprenticeship programs and being nominated as school leaver of the year and coming runner-up in um I think that was 2018 now yeah. that was a definitely a big highlight and I, th I think that was a real moment for me which gave me a lot of confidence to you know believe in my ideas more and just go for things and take opportunities and that was yeah thanks to yourself and thanks to a number of other brilliant people that I got to work with within the firm um as well as that I think just the feeling of passing these exams and getting closer to the point of qualification is so rewarding as you know when you st when I started the apprenticeship kind of had well had my A levels but I didn't have a uni degree and I was kind of worried you know what if I don't pass these exams what if I never reach that point of qualification will I have made a mistake mm -hmm. um, but you know working together with your peer group passing those exams is so rewarding as you feel like you're working towards something big that will yeah really hold you in good stead for the future. Mm -hmm. And let's flip it round. What have been some of the challenges that you've faced that you might have struggled with or obstacles that you've had to overcome? Oh, uh, I, th I think initially it was just that step from 
go into sick form a few days a week for a few hours to starting well it's not it's often not nine till five working you know five full days a week sometimes a lot longer hours I think just the the initial shock of that I found that very tiring the first few months and just being prepared for that um but since then as well sometimes it can be very difficult to juggle exams and workload and it does become a lot sometimes but I, I think just learning to raise it with people when you're struggling is very important i at one point I got far too stressed and I was just like I need a week off just for my health and the firm really listened to that and took that on board and yeah that that was nice as I was quite worried about asking just to sort of take a week off um especially sometimes a late client project might come in you've not got very long to turn it round, and you're working till 10 11 p.m for a few weeks in a row it, it can be very draining but I think just yeah being open with people and having those honest conversations has been a way that I've learned to manage that mm. And, and just making sure I guess being a young person that I still find the time to enjoy my own life I think initially starting the job you kind of forget that because you want to put everything you have into this new job and to prove to people that you know you're what you were worthwhile hiring and that you're you're worth their money <laughs> but um, I think as I've spent a bit longer here you must realize that you know your other relationships and friendships need to be just as important mm. I'd imagine I've always imagined that'd be quite difficult because I think one of the things that I mean I, I went down the university path and I know that those first few weeks at university of freshers weeks and getting to know people were a really important part of building my own confidence and self-esteem when I was younger but also a way of meeting people and and building kind of new friendships and things um, and I think sometimes some young people worry that they're not going to make um, friends, that it's going to be a competition and that you've got to be able to be the perfect candidate right from the start. I sure. From people like you and others that I've met along the way that that isn't always the case. And I also know as well that you're good friends with a lot of people that you work alongside with or that you joined with. So do you yeah, have I'm... a feeling that you missed out or, or, or is that not the case? I definitely don't now at first I was perhaps a bit worried that that was the case as I think yeah those compared to when you go to uni right the first few weeks are freshers weeks everyone's going out all the time whereas maybe starting at work those bonds took a little bit longer to form as everyone wants to be kind of professional and on their best behavior when they're first joining you know a lot of people are very quiet and very reserved um but I think over time as I went to college with my peer group um those bonds started to form and you, I've got loads of friends that are both in my peer group and outside of my peer group some of those are grads that have joined through the grad program and it, they're people that I've regularly see on the weekends now or for a drink after work in the evenings and I'd, I'd definitely say some of them are my best friends now to be honest and yeah okay we can't go out every single night of the week but from my friends I know that went to university I mean yeah they might have done so in first year but it's not the case for them either when they've got final exams you know it's not going out constantly so I, I, I don't feel overall I've missed out, especially when I see the amount of extra money I've had to do things in them and the holidays I've been able to go on. Yeah, you do do some fabulous trips. I get very jealous. <laughs> I should probably be saving towards a house, but that's, an, that's another story. <laughs> You've got plenty of time to do that. <laughs> Um, and thinking about kind of some of the, the conversations that you will have had probably when you were looking at um, choosing an apprenticeship and when you've been um, going down that journey, one of the things that a lot of young people I find worry about is having that conversation with their parents about the choice that they've made. Sure. Now, you and I worked together on the parent campaign that we did back at EY. Um, and you even uh, were on live radio um, locally and nationally with our talent partner Maggie at the time back then and, and cast a shadow over her I remember <laughs> uh, which was fantastic to see how um, what were the conversations like at home for you I think yeah obviously I don't speak a for a lot of people here as for me it was 
very easy in that my parents have always supported the decision I decisions I've made and have trusted me to make those decisions but may, maybe re, uh, being a bit more relevant for more people here I I've been to a lot of careers fairs since I've been at EY to promote the program to other young people and a lot of um, younger people especially from certain um, religions and certain ethnic backgrounds um, they really find it difficult to have those conversations with their parents as there's certain expectations often of them to pursue a certain career path so a lot of them you know their parents want them to do a degree in medicine or dentistry and to go down that sort of route and they, they find it really difficult to have those conversations and it is quite upsetting to see as you can tell for a lot of them it's really not what they want to do um, and I mean, the fact that it was so easy for myself means I'm probably not the best person to say how other people should approach those conversations. But I, I think, especially with EY and other, uh, lots of other big firms that offer apprenticeships out there, there's so much content on social media, there's loads of videos on YouTube and just, you know, forwarding some of these links or sitting down and watching some of these videos hopefully with parents will give them a better insight into what you know what programs their children could be doing and why actually if they want to do it then it's no bad thing mm -hmm. I mean yeah there's tons of videos especially on the EY website of people that have been on the program a number of years speaking about their experience and the things it's enabled them to do people that have joined the firm and have since left and whether that's started up their own companies or have gone to other firms there's loads of videos of them sharing a range of different experiences that they've had and I, I'd like to think if a child really wanted to do that and the parents saw the opportunities available then they'd at least consider them a bit more yeah yeah i would as well but i think i think it was still on a journey with the friendships in a variety of different ways there's still a lot of stigmas attached to it that plays into like you're saying into diversity and people's backgrounds um information that's out there which can sometimes be not necessarily conflicting but be of varying different degrees of quality i find so you never really know which mm -hmm. spot to trust um, which doesn't help when you're trying to make a really important decision as to whether or not to go down a yeah or, or a more traditional and I say traditional with kind of hyphens in it there because I feel like the word traditional when we say going down an academic pathway is slowly being broken down because it isn't when you say the word traditionally it puts that kind of um, that it's the way that you should go to be successful and I know yeah. it's and you know the same as well from having gone down and not yeah and i think one of the things i wish i would have done rather than maybe just reading stuff online was to speak to some more people that were actually working with the firm i mean i, I wasn't kind of sure how to go about that at the time but now i just wish i would have joined linkedin and found some people that worked within the firm in the city i wanted to join in and everyone's so nice and honest when you message them and just you know set up some conversation and some time to speak to those people mm. would have probably been a bit more helpful as well and I think if anyone's considering it then yeah try and find a way of contacting someone that works in the firm and speaking to them about their experiences. Mm. So I'm going to throw a curveball in here for you Jake. <laughs> okay with it. So if you weren't doing what you're doing now what would you be doing? Okay, this is an interesting one, actually. So I guess we could look at it two ways. So we could look at it as though if I'd gone to university, what I would have studied. So um, very much like yourself, I was thinking of actually studying geography at university. Um, I was thinking of specifically doing meteorology, which is quite a quite a niche area to go into. Um, when I was growing up, it was kind of my dream to be a weather lady. So, do you know I had a similar dream to be a weatherman? <laughs> weather we could we could um, set up our own weather show. Yeah, just don't maybe it's the future. Yeah, mess of whatever um, Carol Kirkwood did on the these uh, <laughs> news a few weeks ago. That's interesting. That okay. Well, what was it about meteorology and geography in particular? Just always found the weather like really fascinating. <laughs> I'm not too sure why, to be honest. Um, 
yeah just always quite fascinating about especially watching some of these programs growing up on tv about some of the freak weather events you get somewhere i just always found them so um, like amazing and like you kind of can't believe what you're seeing with your eyes that that could happen um and the science behind it is pretty interesting and even the things some scientists can't explain why they happen so yeah i always thought it was quite interesting um if i hadn't gone to university and i maybe had to choose another career that's maybe a more difficult difficult thing to say where i would have been now um because i applied to a number of other accountancy apprenticeships too and i got some offers on some of the others i applied to but i decided to come and work for ey just based on the people that i met along the way and i found it the most approachable firm and I felt like it was my best fit um other than that what other interests do I have and um, I think if I wasn't maybe studying accounting I'd quite like to do something in terms of sort of planning I, I like planning and organizing things I think that's where my best skills are so maybe something like a wedding planner I think could be quite exciting you know having a nose on people's plans <laughs> Some good options there. It's quite a variety of things I've mentioned. <laughs> right, it's good. It's good. Never know where the future will take me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that we um, all need to bear in mind at the moment is there is a lot of ambiguity out there. But I look at it and go, well, do you know what? We're all going through the same thing at the same time at the moment, and that hasn't happened for a very long time, if ever. Um, and so you've got to be as it is you've got to be optimistic about things and stay positive and look for the opportunities that you can find um and i know that could be it's quite flippant if anybody's listening and thinking well that's easy for both of you to say you've both got jobs and you're working yeah. um, and some of you listening might have been made redundant or might be struggling to find work having come out of university or six bomb over the summer but um, there's a lot to be said for that positive piece and I think personally for me a lot of that comes from looking after myself and focusing on self-care how do you look after yourself to make sure because you mentioned you'd taken that brave step and kind of said I need some time um, but how do you make sure that um, you are looking after yourself Jake? Yeah so I, I think I especially didn't take care of that in the first sort of two years of my career and it's definitely become a bigger focus now because well if you let things build up for too long and don't address them then it creates a much bigger issue so I think the first step is just recognizing those initial signs of when it's getting too much for you and the things I'd say I do to take care of that is definitely introducing more exercise into my life I sort of after leaving school and stopping doing PE the first couple of years of work I did nothing and at that age your metabolism starts to slow down as well and you pile on a few pounds and it just doesn't make you feel good in any aspect it makes you feel lethargic and tired all the time so I think yeah regular exercise is definitely a big thing that I've tried to um introduce more um other than that, I think just taking more regular breaks um having a few days off here and there, trying to find more time for some holidays and mini breaks is another important part. Yeah, great. So I'm going to um, wrap up the interview. There's one question that I ask every guest to finish with, and that would be, what is the best piece of career advice that you would give somebody listening, Joe? Oh best piece okay this has got to be good um so i think the best piece of advice i would give is to really understand understand yourself and what it is that you want to get out of something i think to make the most of any opportunity you really need to know what you want to get out of it and establish that first of all and to make other people aware of that and making other people aware of what it is that you want to achieve at the end of something means you're a lot more likely to get the opportunities that will guide you in that direction. Fantastic piece of advice, love it. Great, well, thank you very much for um, joining me today on the podcast, uh, Jade. It's been great to see you and to hear more about you and to catch up. 
lovely to chat to you too excellent um if you're listening and you've enjoyed the episode don't forget to um to subscribe and please do leave a review as well and we'll be back next week with another episode of the podcast bye for now great i'll speak to you soon